Thank you, Philip, and thanks for inviting me to speak, and thank you all for turning out on uh, a rather miserable evening. Um, it occurred to me that some of you might be wondering what someone from a Centre for Time is doing talking about truth. Um, and so I thought I'd show you the answer to that question. Actually, it's, it's, it's a bit like the, the Da Vinci Code. It's, it's actually hidden in old documents. This is the um, title page of Francis Bacon's New Atlantis, published in about, I think, 1624. And if you look very closely at that, if you, if you, if you blow up the, the picture there, what you get is a picture of time rescuing truth from the cave of darkness. You can see the cave of darkness in the sort of back left of the picture there. In a sense, that's what I'm going to try to do tonight. I'm going to try and rescue truth from a, a kind of cave of darkness. So, because I'm doing it without the advantages of wings and a, a scythe and an egg timer and that sort of thing. One of the tricky things about giving a talk on truth, one of the, one of the things that's been a tricky thing for the last 400 years or so, is that Francis Bacon himself got there first and, and sort of came up with um, an opening line that's rather hard to beat. What is truth, said Justing Pilate, and would not stay for an answer. Um, he's referring, of course, to an incident where um, Pilate is questioning Christ before Christ's crucifixion. If Pilate had stayed for an answer, and if he'd been talking to philosophers instead of to Christ, he would have been waiting a long time, and 2,000 years, and he still wouldn't have his answer. But things take a long time in philosophy, and I think it's fair to say that we are making some progress on the problem. What I want to tell you, in a sense, is about some of the progress that we've made in the last century or so. One of the striking things, actually, about that progress is that Pilate has been getting something of a better press in the last century or so. And here I'm not thinking of, um, I'm not thinking of Nietzsche, who actually said of Pilate, he said, the noble scorn of a Roman before whom the word truth was shamelessly mishandled enriched the New Testament with the only saying in it that has any value. What is truth? I'm not thinking of that, actually. I'm actually thinking of, well, a good example is this man. This is, this is uh, an Oxford philosopher from the 1950s called J.L. Austin. Um, and he has a, um, an article on truth written in 1950, very well known to philosophers, which begins like this. He begins with Bacon's line, what is truth, said jesting Pilate, and would not stay for an answer. And then goes on to say that Pilate was in advance of his time. For truth, uh, Austin says, is itself an abstract noun, a camel of a logical construction, which cannot get past the eye even of a grammarian. Philosophers should take something more nearly their own size to strain at. What Austin is suggesting, in effect, is that um, there's some sense in which what is truth is the wrong question to be asking. And even if Pilate was at fault for asking it, then he was right not to wait around for an answer. We should be asking some different sort of question. This man is Simon Blackburn, who's a professor of philosophy at Cambridge, and who's the author of uh, a number of popular philosophy books, the most recent of which is this one. It's a book published by Penguin last year called Truth, a Guide for the Perplexed. Blackburn's theme is that in contemporary culture there's this there's a, there's a great division, what he refers to as the truth wars, which centers on two very different views of truth. And one of the central themes of Blackburn's book is that this disagreement, what Blackburn's calling the truth wars, is in a sense based on a mistake, a kind of philosophical mistake. And that the right thing to do, and this is in a sense Blackburn's peace proposal, is that we should, we, we should walk away from the conflict. And there's something important that we should see about truth, and once we've seen that, um, um, we should feel free to walk away. And in a sense, this is the, very, the same kind of idea as um, J.L. Austin was suggesting in the quote I gave you earlier. So Blackburn says at one point in the book, suppose truth, as it were, is too small to sustain the battle. This is the beginning of the first truce in, truce in the truth wars, the first intimation that whichever side we were on, we may have been fighting phantoms. I've got quite a lot of sympathy for this line, but um, at the same time, I think that Blackburn hasn't quite got it right. So, in a sense, I, I, I want to agree that we should walk away, but I think there's something very important which Blackburn and many other people miss, which we need to say about truth before we walk away. So the next thing I want to give you is a kind of um, a quick summary of, of, of some of the main philosophical positions um, 
about truth. And this is really, a, 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 in a sense, a summary of 2,000 years or so of philosophical discussion about truth. It's helpful to begin by distinguishing two issues. First issue, what kinds of things can be true? We think of truth as some sort of property, but what kinds of things can have that property? Secondly, what does it take for one of these things to be true? Whatever they are, what makes one of them true? So the first kind of question then is, what kinds of things can be true? Of what kinds of things is truth a property? And here there are a number of candidates, and for our purposes it's not going to be important to, to, to pick on one of them and say, yes, this is the key one. But I want to give you some sense of, of, of what the answers are. So truth might be a property of beliefs, or of assertions, or of claims, or of statements, or of propositions. And roughly speaking, any of these things are things that we can put into sentences of this form. So we can say that the belief that we're in Sydney is true. We can say that the assertion that we're in Sydney is true. We can say that the claim that we're in Sydney is true, or the proposition that we're in Sydney is true. Okay, so the, all of these things are, uh, are things that we can ascribe the property of truth to. 